Hello, I'm Dr. Simon Petridis, musculoskeletal sports physician from the Blackberry Clinic Group, where I'm medical director. And this talk today is on dextrose prolotherapy in musculoskeletal pain. It is designed for sport and exercise medicine doctors, musculoskeletal medicine doctors, podiatrists, and physiotherapists. And what outcomes are we likely to be learning today? Well, what is prolotherapy? You'll find that out. Uh, can it help your patients? That's particularly important. Can you use the technique yourself? And will it enhance your practice? And where can you learn to do it? Now, prolotherapy started maybe as much as 500 years BC when Hippocrates used it uh, by helping javelin throwers with dislocating shoulders using red hot pokers. George Hackett um, started using it actually to prevent hernias by thickening connective tissue. Gus Hemwall took this on and decided it would be more relevant for musculoskeletal disorders. And Jeffrey Patterson, who's only recently died, also took this further. Um, Milne Ongley did some more research uh, which was published on the subject, and James Syriax actually brought it to this country when he was working as a consultant at St. Thomas's. So what types of prolotherapy are there? Well, hypertonic dextrose is one of the commonest used in the world today at several different percentages. Sometimes this can be uh, augmented with a 1% phenol solution I use this particularly in the lumbar spine. Other types of prolotherapy and regenerative medicine also include autologous blood injections, platelet-rich plasma, and stem cell treatments, which are being heavily researched at the moment. And in fact, dry needling and shockwave therapy are also forms of trauma through which the healing process is initiated and connective tissue augmented uh, in terms of blood cells migrating and creating a thicker collagen. So in terms of the actual actions of a prolotherapy injection, it does actually restore and, and increase the strength of connective tissue the collagen fibers get thicker, ligaments, tendons, all have collagen fibers in them, as do the joint capsules and cartilage. So the resulting action is to stabilize joints and reduce the forces of degeneration in, for example, the knee, as a result of minor instabilities. There is also a neuromodulatory effect from 5% dextrose on sensory A delta and C fibers and their iron channels. So what are we using prolotherapy to treat these days? Well, chronic low back pain is one of the most popular, uh, mostly low back pain that is due to instability and sacroiliac joint dysfunction coccidinia, uh, pubic symphysis dysfunction, otherwise known as pelvic girdle pain. And I see a lot of this in my clinic in Milton Keynes. Osteoarthritis, there's been some recent research on osteoarthritis of the knee, particularly with some beneficial results using dextrose. Uh, patella subluxation, patella alignment issues, biomechanical issues and anterior knee pain is a common problem for which we use prolotherapy. Uh, retinaculitis, uh, pain on the edge of the patella, and osgood schlatter syndrome, interestingly. Uh, all of these have been backed up by research. Tendinopathy, apart from tennis elbow, obviously, and golfer's elbow, there's gluteus medius tendinopathy, patella tendinopathy, Achilles tendinopathy, plantar fasciitis, medial tibial stress syndrome, etc. 
the coronary ligament pain in the knee from torsional movements can be benefited from dextrose injection, as can grade one and two uh, partial tears of the medial collateral ligament. Superior tip fib joint instability and paysanserine tendon pain. Uh, classically, any joint instability or ligament laxity of the knee, ankle or foot could benefit from strengthening the, the stabilizers of the joint. I see quite a lot of patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and the uh, associated hypermobility and we seem to get reasonably good results with most people who undergo this treatment. So uh, what are the knee stabilizers, for example? In that particular image on the left, you can see the quadriceps tendon, the patella tendon, uh, the retinaculum, and the medial patellofemoral ligament, and the medial ligament itself with the paysanserine tendon. Now you can imagine that any injection to thicken up these fibers would help on alignment and stability of the patella. The pays anserine area also struggles quite significantly in OA knee and seems to respond very well to uh, injections of dextrose. This is just an example of some of the markings that are used in teaching prolotherapy around the world. So how does it work? Well, uh, it's an osmotic irritant. There is an effect on the membrane of the cells so that the cells are dehydrated and there's some membrane trauma creating an antigenic response. Also, the needling itself uh, and fenestration creates a traumatic uh, irritant to the connective tissues as well as the chemical irritation from phenol when that's added. All of this leads to local tissue trauma and obviously some bleeding. The resulting inflammatory phase leads to a uh, migration of phagocytes such as granulocytes and macrophages and the release of chemical mediators. This leads to the secondary proliferation phase where growth factors are released frequently from platelets, um, such as transforming growth factor beta and connective tissue growth factor, platelet derived growth factor and other cytokines. There's fibroblast, further fibroblast mi migration and collagen deposition and also the ability to form new vessels. The third phase is remodeling where the uh, early forms of collagen type three actually develop and mature into type one collagen. And this resembles the original connective tissue. There is resulting ligament thickening and an increased ability to load, but to bear load. And actually an anabolic type of cartilage growth has been shown in animal studies. This is just a figurative diagram demonstrating the hypothesized mechanisms for pain relief. One is stimulation of local healing amongst intra and extra articular tissues, mostly connective tissue. Then the reduction in joint instability by strengthening these ligaments, re reducing the instability and reducing the degenerative forces on the joint. Then stimulation of cell proliferation, again, augmenting connective tissue. And finally, neuromodulation by desensitizing sensory nerves. Some animal studies have shown significant thickening of uh, sub 
synovial connective tissue in rabbit carpal tunnels. Here's the subsynovial connective tissue layer when saline is injected, and here's the subsynovial connective tissue layer when dextrose is injected. You can see a significant uh, thickening on histological staining. These graphs also demonstrate an improvement in the load bearing ability of connective tissue with dextrose compared to saline. So it seems likely that it's not just the needling effect, it's actually an effect of dextrose. These histological specimens on the right side demonstrate how fibroblast migration occurs after prolotherapy and the fibroblast nuclei are visible uh, in much higher numbers on the right hand image. These fibroblasts then secrete fibrin, which turns into collagen. Okay, so um, before the five minute break, I'll set you a task, which is a case study of a 45 year old lady who complains of lateral ankle pain mostly on walking. She had a previous ankle injury several months ago and it's never really got any better. The x-ray was normal at the time. And on examination, uh, there was a full range of motion. She had a ten tender uh, fibula gutter, just the distal end of the fibula on the anterior aspect and some mild to moderate laxity on ATFL, anterior talofibular ligament testing on the draw test, along with some pain on passive dorsiflexion, particularly on while standing and doing a partial squat. Resisted movements were normal and the external rotation stress test was negative. In standing, she had noticeable overpronation at her subtalar joints on both sides with some synovial thickening and a possible effusion on the painful side. Ultrasound showed a grade one to two tear or disruption of the ATFL, but with normal uh, calcaneofibular ligament and normal anterior inferior tibiofibula ligament. All tendon assessment on ultrasound was normal. And some questions I want you to consider is, do you need an MRI scan for this lady before you start treatment? Um, as a matter of interest, if you did order a scan, the MRI scan only showed some injury to the ATFL ligament and mild synovial thickening in the fibula gutter. But the question you need to answer is, would you actually need to order an MRI scan before starting the treatment? Also, what is the differential diagnosis? And what treatment options do you have, conservative or, or interventional, to treat this lady? I will see you after you've had time to pause and reflect. <laughs> 